Now we're up to C10. C10 is another modified block that's going to have a different layout in the book. You can see here you've got a lot of pieces in this corner, and what they did for paper piecing is they've simplified these corners into one piece. So you've got an octagon, and then you've got your uh, rectangles and your corner pieces and your squares and all that jazz. So we're going to be working from the booklet here, and we've got an assembly. You're going to assemble the center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to base this octagon, and then I'm going to I'm going to attach these rectangles on each side, and they're I think they're the same size, but I'm going to verify that because the way this is, they might not be. I think they are the same size though. So these are green in mine. This is background. This is uh, focus fabric. This is focus fabric too, just like you see here on the block. And then so I'm going to add these rectangles, then add corners so that we're going to form this square here. And then I'm going to make these three pieces into a row and this here. Attach these to that center block. And then the same thing here, make these into a row, make this into a row, and attach this on the edge. So here are my pieces, my octagon in the center. You've got short sides and long sides on this octagon. Just make sure your short sides are pointing towards the corners. This is a very obvious octagon, but later on in the quilt, you're going to have an octagon or two that's a little less obvious, and if you don't get it right, it's gonna make, you're going to assemble the block incorrectly. So this one's not that hard to tell. So I'm going to base these, and I'm going to base these rectangles, and then I'm going to attach the rectangles to the octagon. Then I'll come back and base these and attach them. So the first thing to do is to base the octagon and then these four rectangles on each side. When I base this octagon, I'm going to start here on these short sides. I'm going to do all these short sides first, and then I'm going to do the longer sides. This way you don't have the spiral effect because you tend to get some bunching if you just keep, you know, but that, that's my opinion. I also like the way that if you do it that this, this way, you can better control where these folds and these corners land. You're not going to get it exactly correct with the folds on the corners, but you can get it a lot closer. And then when you attach the rectangles, you can feel your way through the fabric to attach them in the proper place. So I've basted all five pieces and I've attached the two outer ones. So this is what it looks like right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach the other two. So I've got all four rectangles attached to the center octagon. The next thing to do is to attach these corners for basting, I'm going to start here and work my way around, and I'm going to do this 45 degree angle last. And then my tags will be going in towards these. So I'm going to get all four of these basted, and then we can get them attached to the center section. So I've basted all four of my corners, and I've attached this one. What I've done is I started on one end, and then I stitched all the way across this rectangle. Then I came over here to the other end, make sure it was lined up right. And then when I got to here, I was able to stitch this up because these are not exactly on the corner that they should be. So by doing that, by aligning it by here and here, it automatically will make this other piece fall into line. So I'm going to go ahead and finish putting the other three on the center section. So I've got all four corners assembled to the middle. So this is what you should have right now. I'm going to set this aside. Next thing to do is to assemble this, this actually the top and bottom piece. So here's the bottom section and here's the top section. So I'm going to base these and then form them into a row. So I've got the top and bottom rows assembled. Next thing to do is to attach them to the center section. The trick here is to put this square centered on this rectangle. The only spot to line them up is the ends. So what I did here, this is an inch and a half rectangle. I went ahead and found the center of each one because I'm going to have to do that here on the sides later. And then I found the center of this half inch square and I'm going to match those points up and then stitch that together. I'll stitch the uh, square on and then I'll go to the end and line up the ends and then fill in the holes. I'm going to do that for both of these and we'll go to the sides from there. 
So I've attached the top and bottom rows. So this is what you should have right now. Next thing to do is to form these outer rows. So I'll baste and get those formed. So I've got my side rows assembled. So the next thing is to mark my centers, which I've done on my rectangles already. And I'm gonna mark my center of my squares, which is right there. And I'm gonna line those up and attach those the same way I attach these. So I've got the sides attached, and now my C10 block has been completed.